Welcome back to After the Murder Podcast. It's your girl, Denasia, giving you the rundown on the most scandalous and jaw-dropping moments of Peacock's hit series, The Traitors U.S. Get ready to buckle up because it's going to be a wild ride. Oh, I don't even know if this was even put into the podcast last week, but I want to let everybody know I'm not looking over my shoulder anymore, guys. I calmed down. It was genuinely a plant that was hitting the window yesterday. I mean, not yesterday. It was genuinely a plant hitting the window that was giving me anxiety the last time we were filming this. And so I want to let everybody know I'm okay. I'm alive. I didn't get marked. Okay. The, the traders didn't come after me the night before. I'm okay. I just want to say that just to start off the show. Episode five, we lost our blonde bombshells, Janelle from Big Brother and Tamara from Housewives, leaving us with only two blondes left, Kate and Sheree. Peter came up with the awesome plan to hide the shield overall, protecting Bergy from murder. Starting off with episode six, we get around the breakfast table and everyone's leading on Kate for some reason to be helpful. But let's be honest, mama's just trying to figure out everybody's names. She just signed her deal memo. And also, did they watch her game plan for last season? I don't think she's going to be pretty helpful, but she will give us some good interview bites. The traitors were gagged when they saw Bergie come through the door. And he was spared by the blood of Jesus. Let's be for real. Oh, the cheese, the mark of the blood of Jesus was over Bergie last night. Okay. Sheree, though, I don't know if it was, I don't know if she had, because uh, 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 I know this. Sheree, I don't know if you had a flavored Red Bull, a blueberry, or a... Uh, uh, cranberry Red Bull, but mama, you clocked in and you finally pointed out something that would be helpful for the group and that everyone who was up for murder, Trishel, John, and Bergy, all voted for Dan, which kind of pointed the direction for everyone to reconfirm their suspicions, uh, well, Peter's suspicions on who the traitors might be. Do you guys think that Sheree is finally getting the point of the game? I love that. I feel like at the end, Sheree is going to be around the fire pit and it's really going to clock in. But I really need people to start thinking that Sheree is the traitor next. I'm, I'm going to be for real. I don't mean to jump straight to the end, but I really need for everybody to think that Sheree is the traitor in the finale. It, I will only be satisfied if this is the end. Peter reveals his strategy on hiding behind the shield to protect Bergie. And it's very clear that Peter is on Dan and Parvati's ass. Lord, I never thought The Bachelor, to be honest, would have a leg up on the competition. But to be honest, I, as I was watching the episode, it hit me that this man is used to people lying to him on a show about love to get what they want. So I don't think that this, I don't think Traders honestly is any different from The Bachelor, the way how he's playing, right? Um, do you think it was a smart idea for him to reveal his overall plan to compromise his survival in the game? I don't know if it was a great idea for Peter to tell everyone his game plan, but I do think that it was great for him to let everyone know who the traitors might be to realign their focus for the week. Let me know your thoughts and tweet us at after the murder pod to let me know your opinion. So far in the competition, we have only, and when I say we, cause I expect them to split some money with me. Okay. Or, or I just feel like I'm in the house myself. We have only earned $75,000. I think it's like $75,000 so far into the pot. I know for sure that some of these people get paid more than that per season. So this is also very interesting to me on their regular seasons. It's very interesting to me how, um, if you think about it, $75,000 split, what, 15 ways so far? <laughs> it's getting very interesting. But also it's giving cash trip. So I'm not mad. This week, Alan has challenged them to build a catapult in the midst of 60 seconds. And along the trail, there will be opportunities for them to win a shield. Honestly, if you're asking me, hearing that made me miss Janelle because if there is an opportunity to fight for a shield, I know my girl would give it everything, right? But if we don't have Janelle there, I'm hoping this is, I was hoping that this would be CT's chance to shine. Alan tells them that they got to go over the river through the woods in order to build this catapult. And I need to ask, where is Tass Rabbit? You know, 
why you got my girls and John doing heavy lifting, Alan? I feel like if you're going to invite people over to your castle, I think things need to be a little bit more set up than me dragging a catapult across your property to throw it on a target. This, to me, was the least creative out of all the challenges. However, I know that there needs to be physical competition. I do miss when we have the challenges to get to know each other to spot a lie. I do miss that from this challenge. However, them going over across this, this river was giving Prince of Egypt. It was giving when you believe. Trishel and Kevin fighting over the shield in the water was probably the highlight of that whole situation. That was hilarious. Kevin keeps reminding the girls that he is not afraid to fight these women. He comes from a co-ed show, y'all. And I don't understand how you guys keep underestimating the fact that Kevin does not might mind fighting the girls. And honestly, I'm starting to root for it. I really wish that Kevin would do it some more, honestly. These women are way too comfortable. And Kevin, I appreciate the fact that you, you really be clocking in. He's not worried about anything. At the end of the day, this is a competition for Kevin. I really wish that he was a traitor so he had the opportunity to go across win the bag alone. I feel like Kevin should be able to win this bag alone because he is fighting for himself the whole time. I don't think he's looking in the best interest of the group at all, but I do love the fact that Kevin is always thinking about self. If I was Kevin, I would have pushed Trishel further into the water. I feel like, why stop there, you know, Kevin? Like, if you're going to compete with Trishel as you're helping her through the water, I mean, the girl was clearly drowning. And, and he literally was like, no, 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 I need it. Kevin, you should have pushed her into the water. I think if you're going to do that, take it up a notch. You feel me? Watching John do this physical activity gave me hope that one day we might see Nancy Pelosi. Yes, I said Nancy Pelosi. That we might see Nancy Pelosi on next season. Or maybe Mitch McConnell. I just feel like we need to keep up the fact that I love seeing, see, I love, 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 love seeing senior citizens compete on reality TV shows. I'm actually looking forward to seeing, uh, they have a senior citizen uh, competitor, a competitor who is senior citizen, I should say, who's gonna be competing in Deal or No Deal Island. And I'm looking forward to her doing the physical challenges, but also being smarter than everyone to make them do the physical challenges for them. And I, I there's nothing wrong with it. I love the diversity in casting that we're seeing right now. I don't know if it was because of the strike, but I do think that we should stop looking over elderly people when it comes to reality TV. I think that their stories, their physical capabilities, their, their, their mental capabilities should not be ignored when we're thinking about casting for these shows. So listen, if anybody wants to know, I'm team John all the way as well. I think John should have pushed somebody else in the water as well. He should have dragged someone else in. It would have been a great time. After Trishel, we know that poverty grabs a shield. And I just want to say, that poverty grabbing that shield was so performative. And I'm so glad that other people saw it the same way as well. Because it did not make her look less like a traitor. It just made her look like she closed up the opportunity for someone else to get a shield and, and particularly have the potential to be safe. So we see you, Poverty. I want you to know that everyone is clocking your game. And I really do hope that we get Poverty out next week because I don't think that she's being a good traitor at all. That's just my opinion. We'll all see how this all falls out. If I was the traders, I would have thrown this challenge to assure that no one was safe at the end of the day. I feel like poverty, making sure that she got a shield was performative. But if she really wanted to be a badass, I would have struggled to make that catapult. Some, some string, something wouldn't have connected. And I'm also shocked that Kate didn't revolt. Because I, even though Kate realizes that the money is not going to be split up in a fair way. I do feel like I wish that she would have just, you know, for all time's sake, like we bolted against the challenge. This challenge was giving science fair. And I felt like if Poverty or Dan or Phaedra really wanted to shake the boat and make sure that no one was safe, I think they should have, they should have through this challenge. I don't care if it was struggling through the water, you should have dragged somebody down. I don't care if it's, you know, the weight of the catapult. They should have, I mean, honestly, throw a couple sandbags in, on the ground, learn from the book of Kate. 
they should have thrown they should have thrown this challenge. And I think that would have been great to keep everyone up for murder. But let's be honest, the best part after um Kevin almost drowning Trishel in the water. And I'm not saying anything is against Trishel. I just think that Kevin. Kevin looking out for himself is exactly, he needs to be on MTV The Challenge. Like, he needs to be, honestly, I nominate Kevin for Big Brother next season. Uh, Big Brother, what is it, Celebrity Big Brother. I genuinely want to see Kevin, more of Kevin on competition reality shows. I think that him thinking for himself and not the whole best interest of the team is traitor behavior, but he's so bad it's good. So no one's suspecting Kevin for, to being a traitor. And I want to see him do more reality TV, like uh, challenge shows. But yes, Sheree wins the shield, guys, by all upper body strength. Because Sheree is a fit girl, okay? I knew that that upper body was going to come through when it came to that challenge. So go Sheree. Go Sheree. Hey, hey. Go Sheree. Go Sheree. Go Sheree. Go Sheree. Uh, uh, go Sheree. Fast forward, we're going to go to the round table. I feel like they made a huge mistake trying to kill Bergie. I think it was a waste of a kill, you guys. I don't think Dan was really thinking about how this would look when it comes to framing someone around the banishment. Now, my opinion, I think that they should have killed MJ and framed Kevin. I think it was easy. It's an easy... um. It's an easy card to pull. He literally said at the table, if I was a traitor, I would kill you, MJ. And I feel like that is your, that's your free card. Kill MJ, blame it on Kevin. Whenever you guys want to do it. But I think that it was so fresh off. We should have killed MJ to blame Kevin like a couple episodes back. If the traitors were really up on a thousand. But I think because poverty messed up the flow of that one elimination, where she was coming for Phaedra, it kind of messed up the flow of the whole, I think, strategy for the traitors. They're so busy fighting each other, I felt like, in the last couple episodes, that we really haven't seen them really come up with a strategy on how to frame a murder. And I'm excited if we can finally get to that point, because on the opposite end, the faithfuls have figured out a way to frame the traitors. So I really wish that they would have killed Bergie because I think MJ would have been a better person to have off the show and blame Kevin for. So with that being said, we all know that Dan was going to fight for his life. And Poverty coming for the Hardy Boys literally puts a mark on her back for the next round table. Let's talk about Dan's defense. Dan puts Phaedra in the hot seat. And I think that was a big mistake. Out of all of the traitors to put up on the hot seat, it should have been poverty. Poverty killed Ekansu. And that, to me, was a great way for him to frame poverty as being a traitor. Poverty was also one of the only few people that heard uh, Peter's game plan. I thought the answer was right there. But him saying that Phaedra was being extra on her reactions of people being eliminated while she's sitting there in a mink coat? Lashes up to here? Eyes popping, lips busting? I felt like was a terrible excuse to frame Phaedra. Your legal counsel, Dan. Your legal, your legal counsel. I could not believe that. On a show like this, the things that he leaned on made me feel uncomfortable because I feel like I've been called extra in the past as well, you know? And I think a lot of Black women, we have been, or a lot of women, we've been called extra when honestly, this is the baseline, honey. She does too much because you do too little. And it's hard for, and I'm so happy that Phaedra gave him the opportunity to bury himself instead of fighting. I feel like a lot of times, and I'm speaking on the pretense of as a Black woman, because that's what I am, right? We get accused of doing too much when this is literally the baseline of who we are. We're always going to come in with the faux fur. We're always going to have the lashes up to here. We're always going to be, oh, and give you a moment. These are housewives. So again, another week of us saying that people 
have too many emotions on their sleeves, to me, feels like a cop out. This is a murder mystery, honey. Okay. We are here for the actual what? Drama. We said it every single week. I will say this to you guys. Crime. Hunty. And camp. Those are the three same things that we're looking for. So if you are accusing somebody for doing those three things, well, at least two out of the three, which is crime and being, well, honestly, camp and cunty, then you've lost the mark when it comes to your arguments at the table. You need to prove why this person would benefit from killing Bergie. And he failed at that. What does Phaedra have to benefit from killing Bergie compared to what poverty would benefit? killing Bergie. I felt like it was a waste. I felt like he didn't give us the opportunity to really have a good time with poverty and Dan really going at it. I thought with Dan bringing in poverty that he was also going to use that as being like, Larsa said that poverty was that girl from the first week. I thought he was going to clock and, and give us the argument of a lifetime why poverty would be the girl to get out or, you know, exposing that she is a traitor. But I think his lackluster expla explanation is the reason why he was out the door. And bye, baby, bye. I was not, I don't think anybody's, I don't know, you know, the BB girls, I understand this is a blow. The BB girlies, y'all, it's been a blow for y'all. I think for the second season, I, you know, I'm saying this because last season, Cody, went home as well. And this has just been a blow for you guys. And I'm so sorry to say this. I know you guys are saying that his reputation is still going to be intact because he got Johnny Bananas out of here. But I will say that for his argument or him playing possum, he should have popped up on their ass and put poverty on the hot seat. I think it was a waste. It was a total waste. And that's the reason why he was out the door. Phaedra, and I have to say this for all Black women because we are the definition of extra. My name is extra, okay? That's what my name means in Swahili. If you look it up, Danesia means extra in Swahili. Look it up, okay? I also want to give a shout out to Kate. Not a lot of times do Black women have the allyship of having someone just call out just being extra. And I will say this, Kate was giving Judge Judy by questioning his case. And I really do appreciate it of Kate coming to our defense. And when I say our defense, I felt like it was a win for all of us, for Phaedra getting away with that. And he will, I, honestly, a lot of people, I would hope, will think again about coming for Phaedra on some light allegations. And also, Dan, she is not a lawyer, baby. She's an attorney. Okay? There's a difference. If I'm correct, you know, Twitter space, please correct me or people comment below who's watching this, but doesn't that mean that you passed the bar? I think it does. That reminds me of like on, on Big Brother when they said that one of the girls said that Taylor Hale was Miss Detroit. No, mama. Bare minimum, if you could get it wrong, it's Miss Michigan, not Miss Detroit, okay? We're going to stop minimizing. And isn't she like Miss USA? I'm going to look it up. Taylor Hale. Miss, Miss USA. Taylor Hill was Miss USA. And I'm embarrassed. Again, can we stop minimizing Black women's um, identities? That would be so nice. I feel like Dan, I don't know if he meant it or not, but I wanted him to know that when I watched that show, when I watched him say, oh, I'm glad that you guys all believe a lawyer, I literally screamed at the TV, attorney, because I know that an attorney passed the bar, if I'm correct. And so we're going to stop minimizing Black women. And then uh, I would say, what's the word, y'all? What's the word? Villainizing. I wish that in this case that everyone could understand that for Black women, we are so used to people minimizing our attributes and our accomplishments, but maximizing what would make us look villainous. Is that a word? I hope so. And if, it's a, if it is a word, I want Dan to remember that that's not how you play the game, baby. You got to give strategy, okay? Who would benefit killing Marcus? Who would benefit 
killing Johnny Bananas, another man, okay? Because at the end of the day, I really do think that sometimes it's hard for men to trust other men. You got to get people that believe you to be a part of your round table at the end of the day. Look how Sari did it. Sari had Quentin and Andy at the end completely gagged, okay? You need people that are going to believe you around that fire pit to prove that you are not a traitor instead of it being banishment like Dan is literally experiencing. So I also want to note that Peter coming from poverty lets me know for sure, for sure, that Peter is used to women lying to him in the past. I don't believe that poverty is going to make it past the next two weeks. I don't, okay, uh, let me not even say that because I feel like I'm getting excited and I, I want to believe that everybody has figured out the strategy of this game. But I'm going to say that I believe that poverty is not going to make it to the end if Peter is there. That is it. But there is, in my producer mind, you guys, I do remember that there is a moment between Peter and Phaedra. And Phaedra says, I don't need to prove. I don't need to get a rose from you. Or I don't need to prove why I, why I need a rose from you. And to me, that lets me know that there is still a moment where poverty, not poverty, excuse me. There is still a moment that Phaedra and Peter will have a clashing at the table, at the round table. So I'm looking forward to that too. So I don't think that Phaedra is really scot-free. And I think that Dan accusing Phaedra really put a light on her. I just think the excuses that he gave was poorly supported. There were poor accusations. I feel like a lawyer even saying this. Poor accusations, honey. Okay. So, do you think that the group will actually follow through and get rid of poverty next week? I also love the fact that Peter is playing the same game that Kate did last year. That if I'm killed, y'all, if they kill me, it was them. I do love that. This is a murder mystery. Make all of your wild accusations, but you must have something to support it. Because if not, John, Mr. Parliament, is not going to believe you. So I hope that the group does not lose the sight because I do feel like it's taken weeks to get Dan out of the place. I really do hope that we have an opportunity to see them really follow through and get another traitor out. Dan, you really came out of pocket with that one, girl. You really did. And I cannot accept the fact. And I'm so happy to see Dan vanish because that was such a bad way to go out. As a person who loves reality TV and, and murder mystery, true crime, whodunit type television, I feel like Dan missed the mark so bad that when he sashayed away, I would have, I, watching Phaedra take that gulp out of that cup, I, I needed alcohol, okay, around that table. I was really, really disappointed that he went out that bad. Um, do you guys think that Phaedra is going to be scot-free for the rest of this uh, challenge? I personally don't think so. I think that she's allowed to lay low one more week, but I don't really think that Phaedra is going to get through to the end, especially with Trishel peeping game as well. Um, we keep sleeping on Trishel. Trishel is really clocking in after she took um, uh, Peppermint's uh, wardrobe, allegedly. She has really been a power player as in wanting to protect herself and also thinking about how this murder mystery show is supposed to go. And when I have to go through the scales of like uh, most activated to least, it's like Sheree to honestly poverty. It's like a scale. It's like charade of poverty. I would say, you know, Trishel's probably like on the side of poverty where she's really clocking in and she's really playing the game. Post-banishment. Poverty calls out the new alliance between John, Peter, Kevin, Berge, and Trishel. And I think that was a smart thing to do to let, the, let everyone know that if you are not a part of this alliance, let's say, and I like how she's reframing the floor, is that if Peter, because... You know, if you watch the episode, you know what happens next, right? So if Peter is, or any of those people that's in that room cackling, they all could be traitors. I like what she's doing. She's kind of refocusing the uh, the suspicion back to maybe a Kevin, a Bergie, or a Peter. I said, oh, or a Peter, but any of those guys to make sure that it's off of her. My new name for this group is Boy Meets World because Trishel is given to Panga. 
John is giving Mr. Feeney, okay? It's it, it's lining up to just be that, okay? Um, <laughs> it's something about them sitting in that group together. It's it's giving Boy Meets World. It's giving Trishella's Topanga and John is Mr. Feeney. When we move over to the traitor's layer, layer though, we meet with our remaining traitors, Phaedra and Poverty. And Alan busts up in the spot and lets them know that they have the opportunity to choose a new faithful into the fold or murder another guest. I would love to know from you guys what you would have done. Um, Poverty wants to recruit Peter to get her get him off her back. Okay, which I totally understand. She called him, what was it? It was like blue steel or uh, the, 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 the cold-blooded detective. I really do believe that. I again, when we think of other characters from other shows, he reminds me of like a young cop on like law and order, organized crime to be exact, you guys, or criminal intent. Like Peter is smart enough to be a detective However, I do feel like he, I want to see him play, he's doing a good job playing leading man. I forget sometimes that Peter was really on a show that allowed him to really be the leading man. And we all thought, here's the thing, here's the thing about Peter I just, I thought about. We really treated, we really underestimated Peter because his season was boring on The Bachelor. I watched, it was boring until he set that girl up with that country singer. The season was boring. And I think a lot of people thought that Peter was going to be boring as well. And I forgot that he really does know how to clock in from time to time. I really do want to see him align with Phaedra and, and get poverty out. But let him be recruited. You know, poverty wants to recruit him. I'm not really against it. But would have you, would you, But I would love to know from you guys again. Would you have recruited or committed the murder? And who would you have murdered? Now, when I thought about murder again, guys, I would have definitely taken this time out to murder MJ. It keeps the scent off of Phaedra because it's another housewife gone. So it makes it look very suspicious. Phaedra does know how to play the game. But when I think about loyals at the end, when I think about the faithfuls at the end, if Phaedra wants to blend, I don't think Kevin would point out Phaedra. Because Kevin also could be up for banishment. I'm going to keep saying this. Kevin could be up for banishment if they just kill MJ and blame it on him. I think it's a great idea. Or I think because Trishel didn't get it, if I was Phaedra, I would have fought to kill uh, Trishel. If I was Phaedra, I would have fought to kill Trishel. But I understand adding Peter to the fold. I just don't know if I would have wanted to split the money with Peter at the end. You know? Do you guys think that Peter will accept the invitation or do you think that this will lead him to get one step closer on poverty and Phaedra? I would love to hear your thoughts. And also who you would have recruited. Yeah, I don't know who I would kill. I you know what, maybe just recruiting Peter is the best thought. I would love to hear y'all thoughts. Maybe John, I don't know. This was a great challenge, you guys, to figure out who they would kill next. I mean, I'm always gonna lean on killing MJ and blaming Kevin. I felt like that was that was almost like last season where Christian turned around and told everybody that there were only two traitors left. No duh, girl. Once we get it, once we get you out, yes, there will be two traitors left. You've literally gotten me to the finale. Thank you. That's how I feel about Kevin saying that. It's a scot free. And I would like to see when they're gonna take advantage of it. Oh, if I was Peter, I'd kill MJ. Oh, if I was Peter, I'd kill MJ. When I think about it, when I lean on the shoulders of who to frame. John doesn't benefit from fame. John has no real clear enemies. So, you know, killing John doesn't really make any sense. However, Kevin, we got rid of Tamara. And if we get rid of MJ, then I think they can build a really good case that Kevin is the murderer. If I was them, I would pick Kevin over Peter, low key. I would have picked Kevin so bad. Uh, it's, I don't know if this is because I maybe, you know, deep down so I have, maybe I have a crush on Kevin and I'm trying to get through it. But I'm just saying, I would have picked, I would be Kevin. But we're going to see how this goes with Peter. Y'all think Peter going to go into the fold or y'all think Peter about to snitch? I would love to see what happens next week. He's definitely a wild card that 
has been very interesting on this show because a lot of people counted him out or make Berkey the murderer. You know, like I feel like why Peter, girl, what would have been more fun is to put, no, because Berkey don't look like a good liar either. Why do you keep going for bachelors to recruit them afterwards is my question. You know, I feel like it's kind of, it's giving last season, you know, and I definitely would have turned around and freshened it up by picking Kevin. Kevin be fighting everybody. Kevin tell everybody every single time you could get it. And I feel like why not set him up to get God? You know, maybe we can have him on the podcast. I would love that. Kevin, if you're out there, I love you. And I wish they would have recruited you. I feel like it's a waste trying to pick Peter when they should pick the closest person to Peter and then turn around and fade, uh, you know, and frame you. I thought that would be fun. But I guess we're not here to have fun anymore. I guess we're not here to have fun. Well, that's been the tea for episode six. Let me know who you guys think is going to get marked. Who we about to dress up for the funeral? Who we going to dress up for the funeral? Who we going to, you know, hibachi? <laughs> that's what Phaedra was giving. Eat a hibachi. <laughs> Phaedra is more concerned about the breakfast foods than the murder. Now that would have been a great allegation, Dan. I've only seen her get excited more about the breakfast food than the murder. Okay. I also want to know, when do you guys think Kate is going to catch on to the situation? I don't think Kate is ever going to catch on. I really do think that Kate is going to come up with a full solid, you did it. I mean, besides her coming for Phaedra, I really do. I've been coming for Phaedra's uh, beck and call. I do think that uh, I see Kate making it to the end. Can I, oh, let's go into like a little bit of spoilers too. I feel really bad with Dan getting eliminated and Dr. Will. I've never seen him before, but I've seen the clips. Like I've never seen his season, I should say, but I saw clips. I feel real bad that that majority of the Big Brother people are gone now. And they won't see Dr. Will. Y'all on Twitter was like, it's on site, it's on site when Dr. Will, Janelle, and, and Dan will see each other. But they in the sky. They go home. They went bye-bye. They went back to the court, the courtyard. The courtyard, what is the courtyard uh, hotel? Y'all put the address up. Why are out here doxing the hotel that they stayed at? Talking about it's at the courtyard. Marriott. They back at the courtyard. You know? So we really won't have the opportunity to see those three people have their reunion. I'm really sad about seeing at least Janelle go. I feel like if they have to bring back somebody, bring back Janelle over Dan. I don't want to see Dan come back. I think Janelle deserves to come back. And maybe that's the plot twist. Maybe mama, you know, gets the blowout that she deserves because her hair is really nice. Janelle's hair was really popping for the show. And I also want to say that the same people that did my hair and makeup for the last podcast did Kate's hair and makeup for her interviews for this episode. Catch the tea. Catch that, you know, I'm firing my hair and makeup. I'm just letting you guys know, because what I realized is that me and Kate both had the same hair and makeup team. Her makeup looked crazy this episode. My makeup looked crazy this ep uh, last episode. And I just want to let you know that like, I get it that glam is spread thin, but that does not mean sacrifice our faces for it. It was whack. I know. Blase, blase. Check us out every Monday, streaming on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and the Reality Rundown's YouTube page. And remember, join me every week for After the Murder, girl. Tell me before I get murdered.